I wanted to put this video out a while ago, but uh, time was just not on my side. And uh, today, what I'm going to do is put that video out that I promised a long time ago. And what this is, it's uh, the interview I did with AMP founder, co-founder, Tyler Spaulding. And we did an actual uh, interview itself uh, with Tyler a couple of months ago. And here's us just talking about uh, what AMP is, the AMP token, Ampera, and a couple of other different things that was just, you know, pretty much on the surface. And I will link that video in the description below. The title ETH is a long way to run with inflation dead and AMP Flexa. And if you're not familiar with, with Tyler, <clears throat> of course, he is the co-founder of uh, Flexa, uh, previously at uh, NASA, building rockets, MIT alum, and of course, Ampera and the AMP token. So what we talk about in this interview was actually a recording before we did the actual interview itself. And we just went over just some basic things. We talked about regulatory clarity, where things are going. We, we took a lot of a look at the parallels between the history of the internet and what happens today, and then really just can knock down the nuts and bolts. So it was a little bit more in depth than the on surface interview that we did, which we released a couple of months ago. So without further ado, here's the interview with uh, me and Tyler Spaulding. It's an e-commerce company in 1996. Yeah. So I lived through all of that. And it was, this is a scam. This is a fraud. This will never work. <laughs> Customers don't, I mean, you read this and you're actually kind of stunned because we're 20 years on the other side, right? Right. But there was literally, I can remember on like Barron's, they used to have a magazine when, when this was out. There's literally a Amazon.bomb and they have a bomb on the cover with yeah. Bezos on it saying no merchant will ever sell on Amazon. What an absolutely terrible idea. You're losing all these investors money. Why are you doing this? And I mean, that's just one of many, many other examples, but there you go. <laughs> all right. See, I didn't make it up. No, I, <laughs> I literally... I know exactly what you're talking about because I use yeah. this all the time as as an example of of people just to hang in there because people mm -hmm. they get they get short sighted and like well it's just you know the, the price is down so the so the so the project sucks I'm like well it's not it doesn't work like that because you know like, like you talked about e-commerce mm -hmm. there was remember the day when uh, it was all the regulation to get forth because state by state it was hard to get the tax situation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I know way, way too much about tax nexus laws and yeah, having lived well, through that as well. Yeah, but I mean, because we're old enough to remember those days. And and I remember when before the internet, and when the internet came out, people like, they're not, they're always, people always tell me, the government will never allow this to happen because this this free flow of information. I'm like, maybe it will never happen. And then, of course, it went through. And then it's the same thing here with with crypto and Bitcoin. I think... That's why I, I like your product. Uh, the things that you're trying to do, make payments, but make payments mm -hmm. so people don't understand what's going on underneath the hood. And yeah, no one cares. No one, no one yeah. cares. No one cares. When you, when you take your phone and you scan it or tap it against something, all you care about is you get the service in return, right? Only thing that people care about. So, you know, building that, um, and if you can make it better, and by better, it means it needs to be faster, cheaper, right. Um, and you can do that, right? So maybe it can't be necessarily faster. In some instances, maybe. But the cheaper um, is very, very possible when you start looking not only using that infrastructure, but then also harnessing other sort of payment paradigms that I think people have completely neglected because we live in this world of we have credit cards, therefore I spend this, I get rewards, I'm in this cycle. Yeah. Underprivileged people pay for my privilege to be able to use my credit cards because they're the ones revolving on credit, paying ridiculous fees, sitting in a debt cycle forever. That's all also abstracted away to the end user. Um, that's not good marketing to say, yeah. here's your great platinum card with all of these <laughs> benefits. Yeah. You're keeping a thousand people in poverty and their families because yeah. you are benefiting from it. Like that's not a great marketing message. And, and this isn't like, secret this is all out there. there's been reports the kansas city fed has a great paper on it I, I quote a lot and like this is wide open right but that's a lot of times how capitalism works and so i'm not necessarily saying this is this entirely evil system but what if you can have something that's comparable that's just as fast that has infrastructure that then works and you don't have to have that economic model and now people can start paying with assets that they want to, communities that they want to, assets they want to support, communities they're a part of, using loyalty points and expanding what even your definition of money or assets or value are 
that is just undeniably powerful and we're, we're leaning that way. So that's just inevitable for me. Um, when, you know, we first started this, it was, I remember telling people, Oh yeah. The, you know, companies like Facebook will, will make a digital token and they're going to explore money, you know, an intra platform money. Yeah. People are like, that's nuts. They'll never do that. Like Facebook have no interest in ever building something like this. And not only in this cycle, right. Yeah. Not only did that come, but then, something you know wide wide bigger ambitions than i think people thought and that you know didn't really work out for a variety of reasons uh, mm -hmm. but not technical ones i can tell you that and not interest or market interest i can tell you that um yeah. it wasn't those reasons um so it will evolve it will continue to evolve because if that if what facebook was trying to do is inherently very very valuable right. um it's going to happen it'll happen in some manifestation because you have Amazon and Walmart and other multinational companies that, you know, the, the ec underlying economics of that don't change internationally, right? So everyone sees this, so it's coming and we'll see how it's all going to evolve, but it's uh, extremely powerful um, and just inevitable. So anyway, sorry for uh, no, that's good. <laughs> a little no, tangent of things. <laughs> well, it's a good tangent. It's a, it's a tangent to talk about, especially when you, you brought up, you said the reason behind with, with Facebook and Libra. And one of the issues that I see was it, it was it was regulatory uncertainty and regulation clamping down. And it seems like if we don't get regulation right, things can't move forward. I have a problem on this channel. And the problem on the channel is like when I say regulation, I get lambasted because people say you we don't need regulation in crypto and digital assets because we're our own person. We're our own people and we control what happens. We don't need the government to tell us. I'm like, I understand that part. But there's a problem that if we can't move forward, we can't allow things to flourish here in the States. I mean, it'll just go someplace else. It'll happen. But I think we need some kind of clarity. And this is where like, I, I run into a lot of roadblocks with people. Yeah. And, and one element of that in, you know, and I've been in crypto for more than 12 years at this point. So like True. really talking with people throughout this process is, is yes, that's absolutely an angle to take, which I personally really believe in. But the other reality is, if you want payments, let's say, or money, mm -hmm. you are going to have to interface with businesses that, again, are multinational businesses or businesses that have so much complexity to them outside of just processing payments that you can't just erase because you like a different version of money. So you have to understand that, that connecting to these archaic systems, some good, some bad, um, that's just all part of the process and that there's an entity that has thousands and thousands of employees and how they pay them and how that is structured and how they pay their vendors and their operating expenses and all this other complexity that has evolved, some of it very positively over the course of a thousand years. Yeah. Some of that works very well. I mean, I, I look at it and take a step back for just, you know, even one second and say, yes, there's a lot of really bad things in the news and frustrating things in the news regarding, you know, global politics or events or maybe even, you know, specific to us and regulation and in our world and fraud and all these other bad things. And that's absolutely true. Yeah. But on the same token, I can go outside and I can buy whatever food that I like in a major city and I can go, you know, rent an apartment and do all these other things. And there's a lot of things that are actually pretty cost efficient and really effective. And you go back and we have air conditioning, we have heating, we have all these great things, whatever, a refrigerator. And, you know, a hundred years ago, you didn't really have that. You really have indoor plumbing. Um, right. So when you start comparing it to some advancements, I think it's very easy to get caught up in how bad everything is or how frustrating it all is. But when you start comparing some of the other advancements, what we do have from these other systems, whether they're, economic, sociological, or government, you know, created. So yeah. it worked out really well. Um, this is true. So I just always kind of keep that, you know, and I'm not trying to say everything is all fantastic by any means, but there's always going to be some sort of a balance. Now there's a, there's a lot of good out there. It's just people just don't want to, don't want to see it sometimes. Yeah. Negative sells more. Uh, negative and uh, trying to complain around things and uh, having, you know, the attention grabbing headlines for sure. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> The clickbait. So, so Tyler, so what I'll do is, is today, because uh, I, I think, well, first of all, let me ask you this. How can I help you get to where you, where you want to go? How can I help you? How can my channel help you guys? Ah, so um, let's say, I'd say there's two, th there's two main pieces. Um, so um, not sure how much you had looked into things, but we have uh, 
basically Flexa is doing its thing. Absolutely. You've probably seen a lot of information around all of that, but in growing all of that, um, yeah. I personally have now even forked off uh, with another now um, a whole group of global contributors to where we're building a new collateral protocol um, mm -hmm. that ultimately we think is going to end up servicing Flexa in a dramatically more powerful way than it currently works. Um, but we sort of realized that the fundamental aspect of powering Flexa, so enabling these collateral-based payments, mm -hmm. we were sort of at the top, the tip of the iceberg. And so as we look to say, how do we make this better? How do we accept payments more globally? And how does the system actually work across all different sorts of open source wallets, non-custodial wallets, all these things? Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to make small tweaks into how this would work to make it more efficient. And you know, in true crypto fashion, going down the rabbit hole, it turned into an entire sinkhole of this is way bigger, more complex, and actually more valuable than we ever even imagined. And so we realized it wasn't something that even made sense to solve within the confines, let's just say, of, of Flexa to make it as powerful as it can be. So that's what Impera is in that it's a, basically it's collateral protocol. I can go into more detail. It's um, very boring and very straightforward, but we think <laughs> very powerful. Um, and so it's just a mechanism now to enable uh, collateral to be shared across platforms in real life, across apps, people, um, you know, and there's other details to that. Anyway, to your question. Yeah, um, yeah. What, so, uh, so talk to me yeah. well, real quick so I understand. And, and sure. when we talk about these things, you know, of course, we dumb it down as much as possible, mostly for me and, of course, for my subscribers. But for, for Imperi, when you're talking about, about the collateral, are you talking about all types of collateral? Or are you talking yeah. about like, like uh, reward points and everything else that are just kind of uh, out there? No, it's, you... it's, it's going to be anything. Um, I mean, anything more broadly defined. But they're going to be assets that are more appropriate for collateral. So some things that are more liquid, things that people have that they want to use as collateral. So in our current framework, like Ether or Bitcoin are, are great examples of that. Yeah. Um, and we actually are trying to look more for like uh, yield bearing assets. Um, so assets that you can basically hold that are earning some sort of uh, yield generation on top of them, whatever that looks like, right? Not related to us, but an asset that maybe inherently has that those features. Mm -hmm. um, and they could even be like fully regulated project, like uh, products like tokenized T-bills, which we've seen, which are amazing that already there's, uh, from what I've even seen, over $100 million worth of those like fully regulated products already in the market, even after launching a few months ago. So I mean, there's going to be a landslide of things that are going to be available for this. Um, but yeah, so there's that. Um, so from a from an, uh, an awareness perspective or sort of uh, the, the help on our side, it's one, people just being aware of this other protocol, how they could integrate it within other projects they might be working on or know of when they start seeing some of these issues pop up in other protocols, like, oh man, this, this impaired thing might help this. Um, or just the pure spending on Flexa itself, um, uh, spending digital assets, uh, whatever those are, whether they're the, the typical ones or stable coins or basically anything, yeah. um, that movement is really starting to grow and I think start building momentum. And the more that gets talked about, um, when we were at like Flexo, when we were through the you know, last market cycle, we were literally getting like thousands of inquiries per day from merchants looking to accept this stuff. So, no. oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I mean, not big ones, they're small ones, but sure. oh, absolutely. I mean, it's just so overwhelming you can't even come close to servicing it. Um, Was, we, we have, okay, so, so talk, so like I'm a retailer and I want to take payments because I don't want to pay the Stripe and PayPal fees of 2.99% plus 30 cents per transaction fee, right? Which I have to do on, on my businesses. So mm -hmm. they're saying, you know, integrate this with, with us as much as possible. We'll take as much crypto so we can reduce the payments. Is that what it's all about? Which, which I, I, I think would be for, more for Flexa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for Flexa, yes. Right. Um, so on the Flexa side, and it's even easier than that. We try to already integrate with everything they already had. Right, so it's right, literally right. just a turn something on. Um, and then Ampera now is a technology that will power collateralization within Flexa. Um, and that seems a little more complicated than it really is, but it's not. It's more of a, oh, we're going to use Ethereum for processing transactions. It's like a similar analogy. So Flexa right now is using Ethereum and a product called Flexa Capacity. We have to stake collateral separately into pools, backing protocols. And this is all 
Gotcha. To, to also be clear, this is all totally abstracted from the user or even the merchant. No mm-hmm. one knows this is all happening. This is just how the technology works. They can yeah. know. So it's like, we don't hide it, but it's not, you know, mm-hmm. it's not, you don't ever need to care, right? Much as right. you use, um, you know, your uh, uh, Microsoft Excel or, or Google Docs, you don't need to know the database that's actually storing that information. Like you don't, it, it works for you. So that's how that, um, uh, that product currently Flexo works. And now what we've done is we've generalized a collateral um, protocol to basically message that collateral exists, how it gets locked, how it's securely, basically secured against transactions. And we've done that in a totally generalized way, um, which also then makes it um, you know, 10x more usable for what Flexa is doing today because there are little limitations on, on Flexa being able to open this more permissionlessly um, yeah. to other types of wallets and assets. And that's a lot of minutia on the details of why. So I'll hand wave and just say there are complexities, <laughs> uh, which sure. now we, we have solved through this protocol. And it turns out, in doing it this way, oh, wow, this actually is applicable to any sort of a transaction. Um, so we are looking at it a lot more myopically um, than what it actually can become. And that's why I'm really excited about it, despite being so excited about everything that Flexa had done, being with that project for five years. This was not something I was going to just slowly walk away from. Like that. I've been in payments for a long time, and I'm very yeah. proud around what, what is there. So it had to be something that was so entirely compelling that also happens to amplify the goal I already had. So now I get to, you know, do even more. I'm rising kind of the the tide to ride all of the ships with the ship I'm, you know, most proud of. But now I also have to build something as a primitive that affects everything more globally. And that, you know, that's sort of that like challenge or um, kind of overall, you know, perspective I need. Otherwise I'm not, yeah, I can't just jump into something and like, you know, dedicate my life to that. So. Sure. Well, I mean, you've, you've had a, a long, a long uh, lineage of working in payments. So of course it makes sense. So, hey, so, so. Back um, with- oh, I can give a, I don't know, I guess uh, if we're recording this too, and you're kind of splicing things, maybe this yeah. one, we can't say publicly, but I can give you a quick example. Sure. Um, gotcha. Okay. And then just to back up for a couple of things you said, you were talking about uh, Ampera, and then mm-hmm. AMP token, and then, you know, mm-hmm. Flexa. And you talked about when you were, you know, to, to do this with, with AMP for, for collateral. And of course, it's a pain in the ass right now that, you know, I'm guessing you're talking about using the Ethereum network. Yes, absolutely. And so you can you can just say, we're not going to do that anymore because it's a pain. We're going to use AMP for collateral. And we're going to do away with this and whatever's going to happen with there and the, uh, the uh, fees and everything else. We're just going to use this collateral version. And that's why you're doing yes. it. Is that it? Uh, yeah, it's similar. It's um, so Ampera is a contract on Ethereum still, so it's still using mm-hmm. the underpinning security of of Ethereum. Okay. Um, but rather than just a collateral token used in a not that extensible smart contract, the way that Flexa is using it now, we made so rather than taking something like Flexa Capacity, which there, which is the smart contract which governs the collateral usage of verifying collateral is there verifying a transaction has taken place, all the mechanics around that, yeah. um, which it works. Um, we're basically generalizing that and just saying, rather than having that contract using AMP, now, um, you know, specific reflex of payments, what if that got re-engineered to make it, you know, hundred X more powerful and open and fully decentralized, usable for any transactions, which now then Flexa can use. So now it's a more generalized oh, okay. smart you. contract. Yep. Okay, perfect. Yeah, you know what? So that was, there was this question, because I was asking people, you know, what kind of questions you got for Tyler and uh, Danny D. Okay. Danny D. 